Hi and welcome back to the Business Career College video series. In this video we're going to look at the agency system for life insurance agents. This video is a must for those going through the life license qualification program and useful for anybody in any other course where there's some understanding of the regulatory and professional standards involved in the financial services industry. So we're going to have a look at the difference between a captive agent and a managing general agency situation. We're going to have a look at the law of agency and we're going to have a look at some of the appropriate items around regulation of insurance agents. So the first place we'll start is where we often start to make a distinction anyways and this is between the captive agency and the managing general agency. So we also sometimes refer to captive agents as career agents. The two terms are basically used interchangeably. And a captive agent or a career agent, this is almost like an employee. They're not necessarily an employee, but they basically have a manager where they have sort of a linear relationship with that manager. So you would typically have the manager has a relationship with the agent. They would have typically one product line that they would primarily sell. It's pretty common to see other product lines here, but they would have one product line that would be associated directly with the company that their manager would work for. They would get most of their support via that system. So that's training, that's uh, legal counsel, that might be things like bookkeeping services and software and conferences and educational opportunities, you would find that the captive agent or the career agent doesn't really have too much to worry about in terms of managing the sort of business side of their business. They can go out and do the production sides of their business without having to worry too much about business structures and processes and so forth. On the other hand, then they are in a somewhat constrained scenario where they don't have a completely unfettered ability to build a business any way that they want. So it's always a trade-off. They have more support, but typically less freedom. On the managing general agent side, this person would be more independent. And it's not to say that they're fully independent because they will have typically a contractual relationship with this MGA and basically what happens is you've got the agent who has the relationship with the MGA and then the MGA has contracts with insurers. And it is possible to do this other ways but this is by far the most uh, common arrangement. You can have some people who have a direct contract with an insurer and then there are associate general agencies and some other versions of this but this is the most common version and here this person typically has access to a broader product line the trade-off here being that then this person typically has less support some MGAs offer a substantial amount of support and some really just process business this varies quite a bit across the industry and if you're coming into the business you'll figure out kind of where your best fit is the intent of this video is not to offer career advice or anything like that and in fact the advice that I always provide to people when I do get asked this question is that you ended up here in the course you're currently in via a relationship that obviously worked for you you should at least give that relationship an honest try before you start to go shop around. There's lots and lots to learn in this business and whoever brought you here then most likely has a commitment to getting you started in the business and so forth. It may be that down the road maybe then you've learned enough that you can figure out what works best for you but at the beginning this is not a time to be sort of shopping around. So we look at the law of agency then, and this sort of describes even what an agent is. So we can sort of trace this law of agency based on the relationship we're trying to establish. Basically what happens here 
is we've got a principal, or most often in our case, an insurer, and the insurer wants access to these clients, but the problem is the insurer doesn't have enough capacity to go see all the clients it would like to see. So instead, it introduces the agent into the mix. The agent then has a contract with the insurer, and the agent goes out and deals with clients. So now we have this relationship that looks like this. But for legal purposes, as long as the agent is following the agency agreement that they have with the insurer, so the insurer will sign a contract with the agent that describes how this business works. As long as the agent is doing what's in their agency agreement, then any liability around claims or the actual sort of insurance process will flow from the client to the insurer. This would be issues around things like claims and actual insurance contracts and so forth. Where there's liability between the client and the agent, this liability, that is what's the agent liable for as far as their dealings here, these would be things like the recommendations that they make and the advice that they provide. So that's not the insurer providing that, that's the agent providing that advice or those recommendations. So if the wrong amount of insurance is sold, for example, because of advice that the agent gave, then the liability concern would be here between the client and the agent. But if the correct amount of insurance is sold and then there's a dispute about whether the claim will pay, that's where we would go this route. The client's beef is with the insurer and that's where any dispute would be handled. So then we look at where insurance agents are regulated and what the regulated activities are. So what requires regulation or what requires an insurance agent to be an agent? Now we usually say insurance license but technically, most provinces actually, you're obtaining a certificate to act as an insurance agent. And it doesn't matter if you're working in a captive agency system or an MGA system or some hybrid or variation. It's really the same things. It's these business trigger activities. So selling, promoting, making a living from the sale or giving advice around insurance products. These are the activities that generally require licensing. It does vary a little bit from province to province, but basically, if you get paid as a result of somebody having new insurance in force or supporting existing insurance, then likely you require a life insurance license. And in most cases, it's not universally true, but most people who have a life insurance license also have to carry errors and omissions insurance. The errors and omissions insurance covers off that liability we talked about in the last slide. So that if the client, sorry, if the client has a concern with the agent and that ends up in court or in order to get to court even, the agent might need some support or there might need to be money available to pay out claims. That's where the ENO insurance comes in. Who obtain or who provides that license then? Well, we have a variety of licensing and regulatory bodies. In the four western provinces, we have insurance councils. In most of Atlantic Canada, it's the consumer affairs organizations that handle this. In Ontario, we have the Financial Services Commission of Ontario that handles the insurance licensing, although that is potentially changing as we speak. We're in the middle of 2016 as I record this and there is some question about the ongoing structure of insurance regulation in Ontario right now. And then we have continuing ed requirements. So if you are licensed and you live in or carry a license in any of the provinces from Ontario West, then you also have continuing ed requirements and typically those are dealt with by these same organizations and that varies. It's sometimes an annual requirement or sometimes a semi-annual requirement. That's go going to be particular to your province. So I hope that helps to understand how 
an insurance agent is regulated, and even to some extent what an insurance agent is. Thank you very kindly and enjoy your continued studies.